Welcome to Module Monday. Module Monday is a video series where I show off a cool PowerShell module every Monday. So in this edition of Module Monday, we're going to look at Invoke Build. So Invoke Build is a build automation tool that you can use to write your build scripts with PowerShell. So not only can you uh, build PowerShell modules with this, but you can build pretty much anything that you need a uh, build automation tool for. So since PowerShell is now cross-platform, you can also run this on Linux or Mac. So we're going to get into a series of demos here to show off the invoke build um, PowerShell script, but this is the uh, invoke build GitHub repository. So there is a lot of great information here on their Wikipedia page or their uh, wiki page and um, it steps through all the different cool functions of in invoke build. And I definitely suggest you check this out. It's what we use for our build tooling as well. So I have uh, VS Code dialed up here, and I have the Invoke Build module installed. So I'm going to go through just a couple of cool scenarios that you can use, and then I'll show you an example of how we use this inside Iron Man software. So uh, first, we have this simple build script. So the way that uh, Invoke Build works is that you set up a series of tasks, and those tasks then can uh, have dependent tasks or have tasks that need to run after them, that kind of thing. And then you invoke each of these you know, tasks or steps uh, just using the Invoke Build commandlet. So you can see here that I have a build task and a reset task. And then at the bottom here, this dot uh, specifies the default task. So if I were to call this script uh, without a task name, it will execute the build script itself. So you can see my build script here has a script block. And inside that script block, I just call rename item to rename test.txt to test.md. I also have another task that uh, pretty much resets it back and you know renames test.md to test.txt. So let's see what that looks like. So down in the terminal here, I can say invoke build um, file uh, dot slash uh, simple build. So when I run that, it's going to run the default task, and you can see that my test.md file has now uh, been renamed to or test.txt has been renamed to test.md. Um, that's because I ran uh, this command line here with uh, the file name, but no task name specified. So it used the default task for this file. Um, additionally, you can specify a task name. So if I wanted to reset this back to the original state, I could then call the reset task. And you can see here that it's now reset test.txt back to test.md. So if I were to execute the reset task again, it's not going to find the test.md file anymore uh, because it no longer exists. And you're going to see a build error. So this is kind of the output that you would see uh, in a uh, invoke build uh, test or uh, build script. So let's make this a little more complicated. So now we kind of see a basic simple script. But let's take it to the next level and look at some of the features of tasks. So I have a tasks.build.ps1 file here. And you can see I have various tasks, some parameters that I pass in, and then some various ways to configure these tasks. So I have a clean task that's just going to output um, via write, house, write host uh, the configuration variable that I'm passing in, um, or parameter. And you can see that I'm saying clean, cleaning configuration. I also have another task uh, called build. and before the build runs, it's actually going to call the clean task. So anytime you run build, it's actually going to call clean, and then it's going to call this script block here, which then outputs building um, and then the configuration. I have another test task that uh, all it does is write testing out, and it doesn't do um, anything without any other tasks. Um, next, I have a publish task. This writes publishing out and the configuration. And then after it publishes, it's actually going to run the test task. And finally, I have a deploy task. And the deploy task is actually utilizing a feature of um, invoke build called conditional tasks. So you can actually specify the if parameter to the task um, function here. And then you can specify a condition within here to um, evaluate on as to whether or not we're going to run this task. So I only want to deploy if I am in the release configuration. So let's take a look at what it looks like to invoke the this tasks build script. So first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it without any parameters and I'm just going to call file um, tasks build.ps1. And you can see here it's going to uh, invoke the default task. Um, it's going to call build, then test, then deploy. 
You can see though in the output that it called clean, build, test, and then it skipped deploy. That's because build, uh, as I showed earlier, uh, actually calls clean before it actually runs its build task. That's why clean is actually um, executing, even though it's not listed in the default tasks. Additionally, uh, I, the deploy task is leaf, listed in the default tasks, but since it has the condition on here and I didn't specify the release configuration because my default configuration is debug, you see that it did not actually do the deploy task. It skipped it and it, it output that here. So now if we were to actually change this configuration by using the configuration parameter release, it'll actually run the deploy task. And as you can see with invoke build, it actually picks up your parameters automatically and then um, allows you to enter those directly on the invoke build task via uh, dynamic parameters. So when I hit enter here, you'll see that now it did not skip, skip the deployment task. Oops. Uh, it actually uh, called the deployment task and wrote deploying out to, um, out to the uh, command line there. All right. So that's kind of the basic of tasks. There's some more configuration options that you can actually do in terms of uh, running tasks, but these are kind of the basics to get you up and running. Um, to be completely honest, this is kind of the extent that I've taken invoke build in my current build script, but I'm gonna show you some more advanced topics that allow you to kind of build some um, even more uh, complex build scripts. So next, let's actually look at incremental builds. So an incremental build allows you to specify inputs and outputs for a particular task, and it will skip this task if a particular output exists already. So you could do this with conditional tasks. It would get a little bit hard depending on, you know, putting all that, that logic into that if block might be a little uh, complicated. To make it easier, what they've done is they've actually added parameters for inputs and outputs. So this task will only run if this my new task or my new text file dot text uh, doesn't exist. So the idea here is that you could have a long running task that only needs to run once, and if the output already exists, there's no sense in running that task again. Um, so uh, if I run this particular task, so I do invoke build uh, file incremental, and I run that. What you're going to see here is uh, in the output window down here, I have missing output uh, my new text file dot text, and it actually read this text file and output this text file because that file was missing from the outputs parameter here. Um, but now that that output exists, if I were to run that exact same script again, invoke build incremental build dot ps1 and hit enter, what you'll see here is that uh, it's skipping up to date output. So because that output is actually already there, um, it is not going to uh, rerun this task. So that allows you to create build scripts that if there are things that already exist, it will just skip those, uh, those paths and uh, skip that task uh, entirely. So that's one way to kind of speed up your testing or your building. So another thing that you can do to kind of speed up your building is you can use parallel builds. So parallel builds allow you to run multiple uh, build scripts uh, simultaneously. So these will just, you know, kind of run in the background um, all at the same time. So rather than running one task after the other, uh, you can actually run multiple build scripts in parallel. So you can see here I have four build scripts that I'm going to run. The first three, build one through three, are just specifying the file name. And then this final script, uh, x.build.ps1, is actually receiving a value. You can see that value is being passed in as a parameter. So it's just you know specifying a parameter to my build script. So that's all this uh, additional value in this hash table is. So the other thing that's interesting here is you don't want to actually use invoke build for this particular build script because it does not actually have any tasks. So what you're going to do is invoke uh, just the script directly and call build parallel itself. And now when we run that, you can see each one of these scripts are actually writing to this build.txt file. And if we look at the build.txt file, you'll see that we have 231 and then the random number. So uh, it invoked these scripts kind of out of order, obviously, because it's doing it in parallel. So you're not guaranteed an order when you do um, a parallel build, but it can be a lot faster because you are using you know, multiple background run spaces. 
All right. Uh, the last thing I want to show off is the ability to run persistent builds. So a persistent build is a build script that you can actually resume from a point of failure. So the idea here is that unlike an incremental build, like this is more unexpected. An incremental build can, uh, you know, check for output, and if that output exists, you know, you you run the task or not. Uh, you could do a persistent, or you could you. You could implement the persistent technology with uh, the incremental build, but you'd have to write a lot more logic. The idea here is that you kind of have an unexpected error uh, during your build, and you want to resume from where it left off. So you can see here that I have a build script that has step one, two, three, and four, and the default build task actually executes step one, two, three, and four. Um, step two throws an exception, and what we're going to do here is we're actually going to resume from step two and skip step one uh, when we execute our build. So instead of using invoke build, what I'm actually going to do is call their build checkpoint commandlet, followed by the name of the checkpoint file that I want to use. So temp.cli.xml will actually store the state of the build uh, at the time of failure. And then followed by that, I'm going to input a hash table. And this hash table includes um, like the name of the file that I want to execute, you can specify tasks and variables, that kind of thing. Uh, there's more information on their wiki, uh, on their wiki page about uh, what you can put inside that hash table. So let's execute this, and now you can see that we ran step one successfully. We hit step two; it threw an exception, and now our build has failed. Uh, if we look at the temp uh, cli.xml. You'll see there's a bunch of information. Um, I haven't actually dug into all of this, but it pretty much gives the state of where that build was. And now if I go ahead and I skip that particular, or I get rid of that error, um, and I get rid of this here, and then replace that with a resume parameter, what it's going to do is it's going to read that temp.x, or CLI XML file, and resume the build from where it left off. So you can see here that the done step is kind of grayed out because it did not need to re-execute that done step. And now it ran this uh, step two, three, and four uh, to complete the build. So that is an example of persistent build with invoke build. So this was a demonstration of invoke build on module Monday. If you have any cool modules that you'd like me to kind of demonstrate for module Monday, definitely uh, let me know. Uh, you can visit our contact page on ironmansoftware.com. Um, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more Module Mondays.